So I'll start. Um, hello, my name is Duart, and this presentation is based on a paper that appeared just today on Archive with the same title, Investigating Quantum Speedup for Track Reconstruction, Classical and Quantum Computational Complexity Analysis. And we, this was the joint work of a team composed of people from different backgrounds, uh, experimental particle physics, quantum information like myself, mathematics, and, and computer science. Um, and I start by motivating the problem that we study. As you may know, most of our understanding about the fundamental interactions and the subnuclear structure of matter comes from colliding highly energetic uh, particles in accelerator machines. And here on the left-hand side, we see a sketch of the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, which sets bunches of protons going around in op opposite directions at near the speed of light. These bunches are made to collide at specific locations along the beam line where you have the particle detector, such as the one here on the right-hand side, which is the, this particular one is the CMS detector. And these detectors are composed of multiple sensor layers. Uh, when the particles collide, the, uh, uh, many secondary particles are produced and are scattered in all directions. And when this, as these particles cross the detectors multiple layers, they leave signals of their passage called heats. And the collection of heats that was left by a particular particle is called that particle's track. If we want to understand the underlying physics, we need to reconstruct the trajectories of the particles, which starts by reconstructing the tracks. And the difficulty here is that at each month's crossing, resulting in the collision of possibly several particles, up to thousands of heats are recorded, like in this image over here. And on top of that, we must take into account that at the LHC, in its full capacity, two bunches cross at every 25 nanoseconds. So you may imagine the massive amount of data that needs to be processed. And the problem here is that uh, this demand for computational resources is expected to get even worse in the future. So if we want to be able to process every event in the coming runs of the LHC, we need to qualitatively improve our tracking methods. Given this setting, a pertinent question might be, can quantum computers help with track reconstruction? Will they play a role in satisfying the future demands for computational power in this field? So I hope the motivation is clear. And while this question, this challenge, has been approached recently, recently by other groups, we take uh, an approach which is quite different from the other ones that you might find, may find in the literature. Namely, we study track reconstruction from a computational complexity perspective. Our analysis is centered around an algorithm for track reconstruction called the combinatorial track finder, which is a standard algorithm which is used by the CMS collaboration at CERN. So unlike other works, we do not propose a new tracking algorithm. Instead, we study a current one and see if quantum computers could be used to run it faster. Uh, we present a simplified model of tracking, which ignores most of the experimental and hardware details to simplify the analysis. And the idea, of course, being that we focus on the essential aspects that characterize the computational scaling. Our central variable will be the number of particles that are produced in an event which we don't buy in. And in the end, our goal is to characterize, is to find the complexity of the combinatorial track finder algorithm in terms of n. Here is a sketch of our model, uh, an illustration. We may think of the detector as a cylindrical shape with concentric layers. So you can see in this picture, the gray dotted lines would be the detector layers, and the green dots would be, uh, red dots would be the hits. And we assume that each produced particle transverses every layer exactly once. Okay? The input to our problem is a set of hits uh, distributed along the various layer, and they, we assume the heats to be simply three-dimensional three points, and the, the task is to group the, the heats into the right tracks, okay? So now we'll briefly describe what is this method, the combinatorial track finder. It works in four stages. The first stage, the seed generation stage, starts by picking up track seeds. These are sets of three heats chosen from the inner layers, also known as seeding layers, which serve as the initial rudimentary track candidates. Here's an example of a seed, here's another, another, and another. So say we choose this seed. Uh, we can already estimate a rough trajectory for, for this seed, and we can propagate that trajectory until it hints the next layer. Okay? Around this point of intersection between the trajectory and the next layer, we'll look 
for hits that are called to that point of intersection. And this, those hits are called compatible hits. In this case, we have two compatible hits with the trajectory. And we form new track candidates continuing each compatible hit separately. And we do this uh, until we reach the end of the, the detector. Okay? And you may think that with this method, the number of build tracks was exponential with the number of layers. Uh, the reasoning being that at each layer, we can separate the track into many other tracks. Okay, but this does not happen for two reasons. One, we have a rule, like the, which is illustrated here, that if we do not find any compatible hits at all for many layers, we draw a track, and so we do not continue. And another rule, is an important condition to come on in a tutorial track finder method, is that we only propagate up to a fixed number of tracks from layer to layer. Okay, and we understood that from the complexity viewpoint, this is a, the essential routine in track finding. Uh, which is selecting at each layer which five to which hits are going to be used as continuation of the trajectory. And usually it's five. That's the threshold number. Okay. After we've built all, all our tracks, like, like we see here, for example, in different colors, we enter the cleaning stage. Uh, suppose we build these tracks, like I showed you. It's possible that some of them share hits, either starting from different seeds or because the same seed developed into different tracks that it, in the end overlap. This stage compares every track candidate pairwise and, and eliminates the tracks that share too many hits. So for example, in this example, in this example we'll eliminate the pink track for sharing too many hits with the green one. Okay. Finally, a selection stage attributes a quality score to each track based on the quality of the feet of the trajectories to the corresponding hits. And only the ones that satisfy uh, a given quality minimum, minimum are outputted. Okay, so in this example, we'll for say eliminate the orange track. Okay, and without time for any technical details of the proofs here, I'll just show you our conclusions for the com for the complexity. Okay, we present we present the complexity of each of the stages. Uh, and the complexity is presented in terms of the size and input to that stage. Okay, so the seed generation scales as n, as n to the q. This is essentially because we pick free hits uh, to form seeds. The track finding stage scales as a number of produced seeds times n, and this times n comes from that routine that I talked about of selecting at each layer which hits are going to be used as continuation of the track. The track cleaning stage originally scaled as the number of tracks squared. That's because we were comparing every track to see how many hits they shared. But we actually found an, an alternative classical algorithm then that lowered this to O of K log K. Okay? And the track selection stage trivially scales linearly with the size of the input. Okay? And we have shown that in the worst case scenario, this scales as n to the 4. Okay? Now, also, we don't have time to go into details about the quantum algorithms. I'll just give you the seeds for, of the ideas. So we apply Grover search to generate seeds, and we use quantum minimum finding in the track finding stage to find the best continuation of the tracks. Okay, and so the complexity using these routines, the quantum routines, the complexity of the seed generation stage and the track finding stage is lower. Okay, and we reach the conclusion that uh, with these modifications, the complexity can be lower down to an O of n to the 3.5, omitting polylogarithmic factors. Okay. Um, I don't have time to go very much into this, but the idea is that we also shown that in the special case where we want we want to reconstruct the, the n best tracks, we can lower this further to O of n to the cube, again omitting polylog factors. To conclude, um, we have shown that uh, with, with quantum computers, we could reach a lower computational complexity for the combinatorial track finder method. Okay, And as far as we know, this is a first for half data processing. But before we get too excited, of course, we should know that the advantage is very modest. Recall n to the fourth classically versus n to the 3.5 quantum. And given the cost of quantum gates, not to mention the, the cost of implementing QRAM access to the hits data, which we assume in our algorithm, it seems unlikely that this method will ever will ever yield a, a practical advantage over classical methods. So, what can you say about the future between this relationship between uh, half data processing and quantum computation? Well, 
we're not sure. Uh, it seems that the game is still wide open, but we hope that this increasingly active field of research might bring some answers soon. And thank you very much for, for your attention. Great, thank Hi. you very much, uh, Duarte. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't allocated any Q&A time for Duarte and all the other poster upgrade talks, unfortunately, but I have uh, quite a lot of questions already popping in my head. You can ask questions uh, on this talk webpage uh, if you want, and uh, you know Duarte can answer anytime. But also, you, I really encourage everyone to go to the poster session and uh, ask you even more questions. So thanks a lot, uh, Duarte. Thank you.